The world had changed a lot since the first Konami football game on home consoles. The consoles had changed, the business had changed, the demographics and the marketing changed, and the way we played them has also changed. By now, both Sony and Microsoft had changed the world, built some incredible equity with their household home consoles, and had learned a lot by their mistakes to smoothly transition into the new generation, and as had Konami with their PES games too. The disastrous PES debuts on new consoles seemed to be a thing of the past, with the sophomore awkwardness of the Fox engine out of the way. At the end of the previous generation, attention could now be focused on building on the foundations of the new engine and creating an all new legacy for PES in terms of gameplay, visuals, content and even business direction. This is the history of PES on the PlayStation 4. Pro Evolution Soccer 2015 marks the first time Konami are able to debut their new series on the new console with an almost complete array of modes, teams, faces and content. The strategy to debut the Fox engine and endure the bumps, niggles and uncertainty Konami has come to get used to at the end of the last generation at the expense of reputation seems to have paid off, with the absence of option file support being the only major admission. PES 2015 is largely a healthy premium entry onto the 8th generation of consoles. The first thing we notice is the stunning player spotlight style menu screen which randomly depicts various superstars from across the licensed pool of teams in various states of action. On the pitch, 2015 foregoes the brutally scientific simulation of its predecessor and embarks on a more accessible journey throughout the PS4 era. Due to the backlash from an unfinished game from consumers and pressure from corporate, Konami did a 180 on the direction of brutal realism as they, perhaps correctly, assumed the majority of players didn't want pure realism after all and that they want fast and addictive fun instead. Hence 2015 being such a departure from simulation, coupled with the microtransaction culture of gaming and the concept of esports is probably why we are where we are today. PES 2015 is also the first notable victim of the patching culture of next gen football games throughout this generation. The notion that the earliest or original version of a game being drastically changed in terms of weight, feel, responsiveness, AI behavior and flavor throughout its annual life and being a virtually different product by the time it reaches its final patch compared to its genesis. The PES 2015 demo was known for being ridiculously fast yet satisfyingly responsive in comparison to the final version of the game, which is a lot slower, akin to a more lighter version of PES 2014. PES 2015 to 2017 was also the period in which PC gamers were shunned regarding the visual fidelity in comparison to the PS4 and Xbox One versions. While identical from a gameplay capacity, the games were downgraded visually and were identical to their PS3 ports due to Konami having doubts the current PC user base at the time couldn't meet the system requirements demanded of the next gen version. The equality was finally enforced from PES 2018 onwards. The future of the franchise 
eFootball manifests itself here in 2015. The series debut of my club, a condensed version of Master League Online and monetizes it in a bit to compete with their rival's hugely successful Ultimate Team mode. The concept is simple. My club gives the player a platform to create their dream team while maintaining your squad's costs, training and tactics using the new in-game currency known as My Club Coins and GP. The biggest allure of My Club is of course acquiring players randomly through a mystifying slot machine style prize draw. No doubt trying to imitate the suspense and euphoria of FIFA's foot pack openings. Pez's version narrows this down to one player at a time rather than a package of them, making the thrill or disappointment of who you acquire addictive in theory. As welcome as it is that Pez was embracing the online culture and regularly updating the game's database on a weekly basis to reflect the real world form of his rosters, the game is constantly syncing with the servers and persistently seeking updates, which means you're at the regular mercy of static loading screens and establishing communication messages flickering like an annoying fly in the corner of your eye while your life passes you by. From this point onwards, there will no longer be such a thing as a quick game of pets. Pro Evolution Soccer 2015 wasn't quite the FIFA killer right out of the gates on next gen, but it wasn't the disaster that Pez 6 was on the previous EVA. On the field, 2015 produces the finest balance of arcade and realism so far in only its second outing on a still primitive Fox engine. And in comparison to the series history, Konami are about to get comfortable with their new engine quicker than at any other point in the franchise's lifetime. As per the slogan, the pitch is ours. Pez was showing the potential to become, in due time, pitch perfect. Pro Evolution Soccer 2016 commemorates 20 years since the release of the first 3D Konami football game, Goldstorm. From its humble origins on PS1, the PES series has evolved from generation to generation, interpreting the beautiful game in its own unique way, in each title fusing realism and fun effectively. This heritage has been celebrated in PES 2016's new tagline, Love the Past, Play the Future referencing the acknowledgement of both Pez's and football's history, not only with a classy homage to Pez 2's opening, Revisiting Queens, We Will Rock You, but that core gameplay values are important as well, even acknowledging football heroes of the past by incorporating legends in my club for the first time, known as icons, as well as embracing the future of gaming and adapting to the seamlessly interconnected and socially driven landscape of online gaming. Well, sort of. For all the acclaim Konami earned with a terrific marketing campaign and glowing feedback from playtests to even winning the award for best sports game at that year's Gamescom, things were finally going very well for Konami and pets from a brand viewpoint perhaps too well for Konami's standards. Well, allow us to hold their beer. Of course, one of the main incentives for buying the latest annual football game is the privilege of playing with the most up-to-date assets. That means the latest kits, boots, balls, the newest faces and stadiums, but perhaps most importantly, the latest rosters. We live in an era of the aforementioned constant connectivity, frequently searching for updates and even the most low level of developers racing to patch their games to keep them stable and up to date. Konami famously failed spectacularly in this regard, 
PES 2016 launched in September of 2015, still fielding the rosters from the previous season without reflecting a single one of that summer's blockbuster transfers. Which, as far as the vanilla database is concerned, isn't unusual. The fact there wasn't a day one patch to correct this was disappointing enough. Players were left to anticipate Konami's next major update which wouldn't drop until the end of October for any hope of their patience relating to delaying their Master League campaigns being rewarded only for covert Konami to fail once again to simply incorporate the most essential of basic functions. Interestingly, Konami were able to incorporate the updated rosters for their online modes, but mysteriously couldn't extract this same data for its offline counterparts. Konami explains that the two assets are kept separate, but not why that is necessary and more importantly, not why the data from one can't be transferred to the other or why it should take 40 days to push out a roster that still would have been outdated at the game's launch. Eventually, come November, Konami finally accurately reflect the summer deadline transfers and Master Leagues across the globe finally kickstarted. Three months after the end of the transfer window, the damage was done. Three months after the end of the transfer window, the damage was done. Yet another embarrassing blunder for a series that fought hard to restore its reputation to be taken seriously after the humiliation of 2014's launch and missing content, and diehard fans loyalty was being tested and their patience insulted one more time. The summer of 2016 saw Konami release their hugely anticipated expansion pack for free as an apology for the disastrous roster mishandling when it was initially projected to be paid for content. For the first time, Konami acquired the official rights to a major summer international tournament, a privilege that would typically be reserved for their rivals FIFA. However, Konami would also fall short of expectations with the Euro 2016 DLC 2. It was lacking regarding the content it would have had should EA have taken the reins. There would be no Euro qualifying campaign. Only 15 of the tournament's 24 participating nations are officially licensed. And the major appeal of a summer tournament is the immersion of playing in the host stadiums. Also absent in all but one regard, the returning Stade de France. Even the Euro 2016 squads are outdated. What a familiar story! Thankfully, the shortcomings with outdated and unlicensed content could be remedied with the long-awaited support of option files for the first time on the PS4. With the sophistication and security of the consoles ever evolving with each passing generation, it was a concern if the console would ever benefit from the community's ungodly work ever again. But Konami came good in this regard and worked out a solution. Unfortunately, Xbox One owners were shut out in the cold as Microsoft's black box offered no such compromise for the rest of the generation. On the pitch, PES 2016 seems to really carve out an identity of its own in its third year running on Fox. For all the mishaps regarding the presentation and content, the gameplay is where the game earns its acclaim. The physicality is reworked across the pitch enabling for far more contextual collisions and with a greater variation in ball physics, we see a lot less automation in outcomes regarding where the ball bounces off of body parts and where it ends up in crucial situations. Dynamic weather 
is implemented for the first time, which means rainy weather fluctuates during matches rather than one continuous downpour, as well as the wet weather affecting the play too for the first time on the engine. Now, players slip when making a sudden change in direction, and even the pace of the ball is affected with the slick wet turf, increasing the speed on passes and even strikes, creating another dramatic dynamic to consider in your aquatic matches. The downsides, however, were its goalkeepers and fouls. Despite the former being pronounced as majorly improved, it was clear they were cursed to remain fused to their goal line, meaning they would never preempt one-on-one -on -one situations, nor would they ever seem to go full stretch for low and hard strikes, even with all the notice of them coming from outside of the penalty area. And in spite of the greatly improved play physicality, it rarely resulted in fouls, free kicks or penalties, which would also burden the series from this point on until 2020. For the first time, players can control goal celebrations, something FIFA has adopted since Euro 2008. Coverboy Neymar demonstrates his brand new scanned face. One of the first players in the history of pets to be recreated with the trend of scanning a player's head into the game and calling it a day. Konami carried so much positive momentum into the launch of PES 2016 only to almost throw it all away with disastrous disorganization with the roster debacle and even its apologetic Euro DLC was underwhelming. Still, all these aside, Konami demonstrate that on the field, they still know how to command respect and if they can smooth out the logistical issues, PES on the PS4 has unlimited potential. If PES 6 and PES 2013 can be considered by their communities as the finest editions of PES of their generations, then Pro Evolution Soccer 2017 can arguably take the crown for the 8th generation of consoles. In a year that saw EA jump from their trusty and polished Ignite engine to the unproven Frostbite version, as far as football games are concerned, on the pitch, FIFA's transition wasn't as smooth as it reliably was. However, the Fox engine had truly come of age and Konami took gigantic strides on the field with PES 2017. PES 2017 is the pinnacle in principal areas such as AI, player positioning, responsiveness and player physics. Its strongest point is the opposition artificial intelligence, of which is a genuine surprise. Fans would remark that sometimes it was like playing against a human being, because they will do things that doesn't typically happen from a predictable robotic comm. Their playmakers would actually work openings and play clever through balls. They would pass diagonally or even across the final third to keep possession, rather than reaching the attacking boundary and forcing a magic pass. The AI even uses skills against you with the appropriate players, which finally brings those that practice flair to life. Konami released three data packs for PES 2017, setting a bipolar precedent for fans and editors alike. On the one hand, it's hard to complain about adding new player faces and even updating breakout stars after launch for the first time in the series, when in the old days we would have to wait for the following annual edition for such a revision 
all the new stadiums, including the lovingly crafted and meticulously detailed Anfield, Signal Iduna Park and Allianz Park, introduced for the first major part in the clubs in the series post-launch 2. However, on the other hand, for the dedicated community of editors and option file connoisseurs, each data pack and its accompanying squad update would destroy thousands of man hours of work in seconds, forcing reluctant corrections and amendments by option file editors, often in vain before the next data pack would drop and restart the problem. Data packs in PES 2017 were among the most destructive in the PES franchise. In addition to the free content update, the monetary incentive for my club players was aroused with even more my club legends. Once upon a time, the tribute to football's iconic heroes was paid via the in-game Pez shop, albeit with a bit of identity DIY. This time, they were as authentic as Neymar's navel. Liverpool and Barcelona Hall of Famers were inaugurated with the most breathtaking of recreated likenesses. Once again, crafted from the hands of Konami's talented artists, as of course there is no logistical way of cheating with the scanning technology and capturing the youth of Rush, Owen, Komen and Co. The AI for a football game must be unbelievably difficult to code given the fluent nature of the sport. With this in mind, Konami outdone themselves with their work on PES 2017, the last edition that was truly reflective of the fundamentals of football on the pitch and even had artificial intelligence that could keep you company offline and wouldn't get stale or repetitive with their playing styles or methods of scoring. Pro Evolution Soccer 2018 should have taken a great game in PES 2017 to new heights. It should have raised the proverbial crossbar, if you will, though it's not quite on the same form as its predecessor. For the first time, Konami issued an online-only beta test to the public during the summer of 2017 which was positively received by fans and showed great promise for what was to come over that winter's release. It gives us an early taste of the newly added online co-op feature which brings players a step closer to online multiplayer. The game was pitched as the first in the beginning of a major three year cycle. A vague statement which was never truly elaborated on or provided any clarity, nor seemingly lived up to the grandeur of its prophecy. Nonetheless, on the pitch, the pace has dropped slightly, which fits neatly with the game's crisp and versatile passing. Tighter, more responsive dribbling mechanics allows the better players to truly weave their magic, adorned by the many wonderful new animations. If the three year cycle applied to anything here, the first seeds of Ninja eFootball are planted with an obnoxious overabundance of unnecessary back heels and flicks when a simple square pass would suffice. Perhaps the cycle of sexing up the game of football to casuals and kids and capitalizing on the ruthless trend of Ultimate Team and its cartoon highlight reels propagandized by EA manifested itself in year one of its said cycle. Random selection mode returns for the first time since the cult classic PES 6. Unlike its source inspiration, the idea is that you select teams and leagues and then you'll get a random mishmash of all the players put into your squad, 
much like Ultimate Team's Draft Mode, allowing an endless possibility of star combinations for the ultimate offline fantasy team experience. Konami continue its new trend of implementing new stadiums as DLC. First of all, Arsenal's Emirates Stadium is included for the first time in the series where it remains until present day and it's accompanied by Chile's scenic National Stadium to complement its new partner league Campeonato Chileno. To further immerse us in the hallowed halls of the Camp Nou, Konami have painstakingly recreated its famous mural adorned players tunnel. A classy touch no doubt to one of the world's most famous theatres of football. Signal Iduna Park also enjoys this treatment too, complete with its goalkeeper tormenting low ceiling. Centred on the concept that PES 2018 is where legends are made, Konami acquire a major coup with the addition of England legend and global icon David Beckham as a legend for my club. Alongside news that the PES series has surpassed 100 million copies sold since the franchise began back in 1995, Konami celebrate the 100 million milestone by bringing in Ronaldinho, Maradona, Johan Cruyff, Roberto Carlos, Romario and Luis Figo to my club as new legendary players too. PES 2018 even marks the first celebrity crossover as the world's fastest man Usain Bolt is welcomed to the franchise as a pre-order bonus, complete with an unsurprising sprint speed of 99. The PC version at long last also matches the console version in terms of visual discrepancy, another constant that will be honoured until present day. PES 2018 isn't as imitable of the sport as 2017 was but does manage to maintain a wonderful job of consolidating and evolving on the fantastic groundwork laid by its predecessor. The improvements may not make headlines but they do make for one of the most complete and satisfying football games. PES 2019 is the first game in the series to simply be branded as, well, PES. No doubt the first episode of an ongoing identity struggle over the coming years before prefixing with eFootball before eventually settling on that brand once and for all. For the first time since 2016, the game is fronted by a lone cover star in Barcelona new boy Philip Coutinho as well as a more mature David Beckham headlining the special edition. For the first time in history a Pro Evolution soccer game was used in a kit unveiling. Liverpool unveiled their new third kit for the 2018-2019 football season by using in-game footage from PES 2019. 10 years after being introduced in PES 2009, PES 2019 sees a farewell to Europe's flagship competition, the Champions League, as well as the Europa League 2. However, where major licenses were lost, more new ones were gained. 12 new fully licensed leagues were added despite appearing in early marketing materials, Borussia Dortmund prematurely terminated their partnership with Konami, which made way for Schalke to swoop in and fly the flag for their Bundesliga, complete with a breathtaking recreation of the Veltins Arena. We also return to Monte Carlo for the first time in 10 years. Restored Louis Du a company's newly partnered club Monaco, complete with the beautiful views of its steep mountains and famous 
nine arches. Celtic and Rangers fans rejoiced not only at the news their rival clubs would be partnered with Konami, but that their ground would also debut in the dream-like detail we've come to expect this generation. Even Celtic and Rangers editions of the game were available to pre-order. However, a mysterious delay meant Scottish fans would have to wait until the following February for Konami to finally implement the promised stadiums. Even though they were announced prior to the game's earliest launch in the series of August of 2018. The visuals are given a tremendous uplift. New enlightened software has been used to enhance the lighting, especially during dusk, giving everything a slight seductive golden glare. The sights of this game truly drip in atmosphere. The net physics are significantly improved and breathe new life and eye candy into some of the thunderous goals that can be scored thanks to the new shooting mechanics. And for the first time since PES 5 and 6, Snow finally returns to the series and even affects the action on the pitch too, this time around. Seeing as how the direction was leaning towards the eSports, it was only a matter of time before Konami curved the skill gap and relieved the game of some of its simulative properties to accommodate its evolving audience. The gameplay does improve in many areas, especially with 11 new skill traits having been introduced, including edge turns, no look passing, and dipping and rising shots. The player individuality is expanded upon, where skills and strengths are more prominent during gameplay and the action is more fluid and responsive than ever before, which does provide a satisfying engagement. For the first time, making substitutions on the fly is now a possibility. The closest we came to quickly changing players conveniently was quick substitutions in the pause menu, last seen in 2010. However, that still required you to pause once the play resumed. In 2019, we are able to make knee-jerk, like-for-like -like switches while some of the cutscenes and replays buy us time. However, with the relaxing of the more consequential elements of football comes the decompression of the midfield, which essentially means the strategic and patient element of the game becomes ineffective. It means it's easy to simply drill the ball with a centre back right through the middle of the park towards a striker or attackers can simply receive the ball and turn sprint into acres of open space while defenders retreat giving the attacker a wealth of time to do as they please while teammate AI becomes passive rather than supporting you in pressing. This is to encourage more of the 1v1 type gameplay philosophy that manifests itself in online gameplay from here onwards. My club features some new changes too, such as featured players being released each week with outstanding real world performances being reflected in my club via stat boosts as well as players now being bundled in packs of four as opposed to the single player reveals of years previous. The legends joining the class of 2019 include some of Arsenal's iconic invincibles such as Robert Pires, Sol Campbell, World Cup winners Gilberto Silva and Emmanuel Petit. And finally, the Red Rooster era version of Freddy Lundberg, as well as Inter Milan's cult favourites such as Rakoba, Djokaev, Cambiasso, and of course, as the unofficial series icon, Seabass's favourite player, the Emperor, 
Adriana finally returning home to the series that arguably did more to familiarize himself to many fans across the world than 442 magazine probably did pre-YouTube days of football. Overall, PES 2019 signifies that many things change while many things remain the same. Some welcomed and realistic gameplay mechanics and traits are subverted by the descent into faster paced arcade gameplay to appease the online demographic, while Konami's licensing problems and losses of significant ones such as the Champions League are well documented and are a part of the swings and roundabouts of the franchise. The inexplicable delay of the Scottish stadiums continue to typify Konami's poor organisation, which is perplexing given the experience of the company with its franchise by now. From Goldstorm Winning 11 ISS And of course Pro Evolution Soccer The franchise has undergone many branding revisions The latest being the prefix of eFootball PES 2020 Konami signalled its flagship franchise would steer in the direction of yearning to become a serious consideration in the rapidly evolving world of esports, online gaming households and professional tournaments. However, after the fast paced and casually appeasing PES 2019, the developers juxtaposed what is typically expected from a dopamine delivering ninja football experience and surprised many with a return to its slower tempoed and semi-simulative routes for 2020. The automation of the predecessor has been reduced significantly, allowing for a more realistic portrayal of player error, creating more opportunities for you to take advantage of passive passing while building up and miss kicks when rushing a shot. The emphasis on player context is back with a presence. The long-serving, close-control dribbling, usually assigned to R2, was remapped to the right stick under the guise of the newly christened finesse dribbling. Included for the first time in the PES series, there is a new game mode called Matchday Mode. Players around the world will help their team to glory one match at a time in this new mode. Master League at long last received a number of revamps, with a fresh batch of all new cutscenes taking place in staff meetings, training sessions and press conferences. Manager models and even legendary players are available for selection as well as the introduction of a dialogue system which resembles less of the Telltale's Walking Dead and more of just pick the right choice until you get what you want, or rather, get the repetition over with. While the Champions League is still firmly between the thighs of the first trapping FIFA, Konami still retained the license for the UEFA Euros, which means Konami were able to revive its capacity to host the upcoming European Championships Euro 2020. This time, Konami were able to incorporate more stadiums than 2016's lone Stade de France. Wembley, Amsterdam, St. Petersburg and Munich were all dressed up in turquoise for the tournament that was impromptuously suspended due to that year's apocalypse. Considering Konami's continent was of course at the source of the epicenter, it was unsurprising development on the upcoming 2021 would be drastically affected.
Another factor involved in the fate of PES 2021 included the transition to the next generation consoles in the PS5 and the Xbox series. And with already compromised teams and resources, focus shifted to the upcoming eFootball PES 2022, anticipated to be rebuilt using an all new engine. With the company's track record of launches on new consoles and the current global situation, it was understood why Konami wanted to skew attention between both games and decided on releasing PES 2021, or rather, re-releasing PES 2020 as eFootball PES 2021 season update. Even though FIFA had been memed and ridiculed for selling the same game as the previous years under the guise of a reskin, it appeared that it would take more than an alternative menu colour scheme, retextured kits and the odd face update as Konami still made strides every year to literally release a different game under the surface. This was in some ways seen as an acceptable compromise from fans and in some ways a homage to the mid-season Winning Eleven international and liveware evolution versions seasoned enthusiasts would worship and spend a small fortune shipping in over the PS2 years. 2021 felt in some ways more than a reskin of 2020 but rather an improved revision of its predecessor much in the same way. Winning 11-9 liveware evolution was to Pro Evolution Soccer 5 implementing unofficial and unannounced, yet evident, quality of life improvements such as better responsiveness, tweaks to shooting and passing, more balanced foul frequency and quicker player switching. The changes are subtle and are next to impossible to appreciate as a viewer as opposed to a player with the game to hand. Konami are known to change stuff via patches and updates throughout this generation's lifespan. Yet, with so much as list of vague, global improvements, bullet point to the latest patch notes. It shouldn't come as much of a surprise that Konami wouldn't declare any of 2021's adjustments either. Despite the infancy of eFootball, it's appropriate that this series, the history of pets, should culminate with the end, the end of an era, the demise of pets. Pez ended not just in name, but in principle too. Near constant online connectivity changed not only the way games were played, but also the way they were made, the way they were enjoyed, but also the way they were exploited. Thanks to the patching culture mentioned at the beginning of this episode, the eighth generation of consoles, which was not only comprised of traditional home systems this time, but also the emergence of mobile and cloud gaming saw a significant shift from the convenience of a scheduled day one patch to fix issues caused by time constraints and development times more demanding than ever before, to the inconsiderate and inexcusable launches of unstable software. The unforgivable developers were well aware of throughout their marketing campaigns. Taking a consumer's money while in no genuine rush to issue an immediate fix or an apology. Cyberpunk WWE 2K20 and Assassin's Creed are examples of acclaimed publishers launching games in shambolic broken states and eFootball kept Konami's legacy long tradition alive of launching on a new engine 
and on a new console to complete disaster and ridicule. Making the decision to launch the game knowingly before it was even complete. The only solace to be taken is that it is a standalone free to play title on the surface. However, even that is questionable when Konami were encouraging fans to spend money on my club pre order bonuses and pitched eFootball as a fully fledged release when in actuality it was more akin to a trial version of a deluxe demo we'd become accustomed to. First of all, the promise of a groundbreaking new game engine powered by Unreal technology with breathtaking new visuals was broken. Much like many of the game's dysfunctional blue and yellow menus with obnoxiously amateur font choices which are an offensive attack on the senses or the abysmal frame rate of the cutscenes that stagger along in agonizing fashion like some elderly bitch aching her way up the stairs while you trail behind with somewhere better to be or the wikipedia sized catalogue of hilarious, humiliating and haunting bugs sprawled across the game once the uninspiringly designed eFootball ball is kicked. However, once the ball is struck, we can objectively look at what the game does accomplish. The art of defending as a unit is swapped out for the 1v1 battles between attacker and defender, seemingly inspired by ISS3. Beating a defender with an improved dribbling mechanic or holding off an attacking winger with a perfectly timed press of L2, putting yourself between the opponent and the ball has a satisfaction to it. But it's less about the fundamentals of football and more about the fun and the skill of the person with the controller. The ball is an exclusive entity, which means it's no longer glued to a player or rubber banded to certain animations or situations, but rather an object your player model has to literally take care and consideration to control while dribbling or trap when passing leading to truly unpredictable moments and attentiveness from the player but also a frustration due to basic functions like players not linking up with the free passes bringing the simplest of balls under the minimum control leading to calamity at the lowest capacity. For the first time Konami have advised they will be implementing an actual mechanic via an upcoming patch. The feature oddly worded as sharp kicks, a modifier which allows for driven passes, shots and crosses with significant pace and potential for chaos under the right circumstances. The curse of Konami launching a new football game on a new engine or platform to ridicule remains unbroken. Those who fail to learn from mistakes are doomed to repeat them. And with a company whose insatiable thirst for microtransaction money forced them to target a new crowd with the vision to unite mobile gamers and console owners like a corporate capitalist utopia on paper, in actuality has led to a tone deaf failure to make a strong first impression and to quell many die-hard fans skepticism about the future of the franchise. Konami's football games have experienced incredible heights of acclaim and drowned in lows of mediocrity. We've learned over the course of this series that they've restored their reputation with subsequent releases that have become inspired under pressure and demonstrated adversity under scrutiny. In spite of the conflicting crossroads its creators may take its once humble franchise, one cannot deny 
the historic legacy of this influential franchise throughout its 25 plus years of existence. Everybody remembers their first pets, much in the same way everybody remembers their first kiss, a seminal moment in the formulative years of any football fan come gamer. Good times don't last forever, but good games do. The next time you find yourself disillusioned with the latest modern football game and say to oneself that there's no good football game to play this year, remind yourself that there has always been a library of timeless football titles, most of which documented in this retrospective. Pro Evolution Soccer not only represents good football games, but also art and history. It's more than entertainment or just a business. They are irreplaceable memories of simpler times and time capsules of our youth. They are an ambition to interpret the beautiful game and paying a faithful homage to it in the form of a game. Blurring the lines between simulation and arcade. A showcase of artists who fused the stylized with the recognizable. This is a celebration of the legacy of Pez's incomparable and magical DNA. This is the history of Pez. <laughs>